This is an interview with Bill Newell, 17 Rosedale Avenue, Hastings. It's, a, uh, it's for the Hastings Historical Society. Today is March 26, 1990. Uh, my name is Evelyn Drews. I'd like us to talk about your father, Alexander Newell Bill. Um, we're interested in him because he built so many of the stone walls in Hastings. First of all, though, tell me, uh, where was your father born? My pop was born in Anne Arundel County down in Ireland. Do you know why he happened to come to this country? Well, I guess because it was the land of opportunity. He and a number of his friends came to America. That was it in those days, I guess. Where did he settle when he came to New York? He came uh, to New York, New York, in New York City. Mm -hmm. Did he have any friends? Is that, uh, did he come because he had well, friends in New York? Well, I assume he had some friends because it, as when I was young, I knew everybody in New York, probably knew my father because he, he had a lot of Far Downers, as we called them. But what were Far Downers? Far Downers were Northern Ireland uh, Protestants. That was unusual, wasn't it? Well, I don't know, because people were very clannish in those days, because all of your communities had Irish Protestant here, Irish mm -hmm. Catholic there, Italians here, Germans here. It, mm -hmm. was, it was quite mm -hmm. a split up. In fact, well, the Irish are still fighting the war, but yeah. That's because yeah. Do you know what year he came to the U.S.? He came first in 1895. Mm -hmm. And uh, did he have a profession when he came to this country? He was a stonecutter as a boy in, I guess, 1895. He was 19 years old then, or 20 years old. And so mm -hmm. he was working at his trade since he was 13. So. Mm -hmm. Did he have trouble getting jobs in New York when he arrived? No, probably not, because uh, uh, stone cutting was a real profession, more, more or less like a professional man mm -hmm. today. What kind of work did he do in New York? Stone cutting and cutting curb and mm -hmm. probably construction of buildings and wherever mm -hmm. there was some stone work, he was there working. Yeah, yeah. He worked all the time, I must say. Mm -hmm. And uh, how about your mother? Uh, where was your mother? Well, my mother came from Anne County down Ireland. But there's a story about your father going back to Ireland. Well, maybe I started the story, but he returned to Ireland. Uh, he came here in 1895 himself, and he returned to Ireland somewhere within 1895 to 1900, and he brought my mother to America. And I'm not clear about where they were married, but I believe they were married in America. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did, uh, was this an arranged marriage, or is this somebody he had known, a girl he had known in Ireland? Uh, yes, uh, yes it was uh, a girl he knew in Ireland, because my father came from a family of about eight or nine boys, and my mother came from a family of eight, eight or nine girls. <laughs> and to my father and one brother, they each married sisters. Mm -hmm. And did, that was that was Frank Newell, who also lived in Hastings. Did Frank and Frank Newell came to the uh, to the U.S. Uh, that's also. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And they lived with my father when they first set up and mm -hmm. at 149 mm -hmm. James Street. Yeah. Okay. So when did they come to Hastings? I believe they came to Hastings. Uh, well, Pop came early uh, and to build his house in, in 1905. Uh, but they finally moved into Hastings in 1907. And tell me about where they uh, lived when they came to Hastings. They lived at 149 James Street once they moved in. So he house, built the That's the house he built. He with built the, with the house. Them. That's right. And then they moved into the new house on That's uh, right. James Street. Mm -hmm. uh, was that about the only house on James Street at that time? On your, you were on, no, you were on the dead end, end street. That's right. Mm -hmm. I'm on the north end on the dead end street. There was a Mr. Abernathy had a house next door to Pop, uh, which young Eddie Forshaw lives in now. I call him young. Mm -hmm. but anyhow, mm -hmm. young Eddie Forshaw lives in there now. And Pop had bought the property from Mr. Abernathy. Mm -hmm. And then, well, then you he lived, built his house. You lived on... James Street. Your father lived on James Street. High Street was not cut through to the parkway at that time. No, it went down to Prince Street and then there was a curve 
that took it out to uh, Green Street, that's right. And Green Street then was the only way of getting out from... In or out of Uniontown. Of Uniontown. That's right. that, mm -hmm. Unless you come over the hill by Broadway. Yeah. That was the only way down on the Farragut side. Mm -hmm. um, your mother and father uh, had a few children. Oh, yes. When they moved from New York to Hastings, uh, they had my sister Helen, which was Helen McConnell, and my sister Jenny, which was Jenny Graff. And Helen was two, and Jenny was really an infant. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, two was an infant, but mm -hmm. uh, she was younger about yeah. a year. Yeah. And you went to the Reformed Church? Yes. yes. Yeah. I think my father, when he first came here, he, there was a Methodist church, and in uh, Dobbs Ferry that he used mm -hmm. to walk to every Sunday morning, but then, mm -hmm. then he switched over to the Reformed Church, but I don't know when, a long time mm -hmm. ago. I was christened in the Reformed Church, and that's 70 years ago, so. Uh-huh, uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. You were, how many children were there in your family? Oh, five girls and three boys. Uh-huh, and your mother died when you were uh, My very mother young. died and was born in 1884 and died in 1922. You told me that you were uh, just two when, when your mother died. Yeah, because I was born in 1919. Uh-huh. And you I also... I had a younger sister. Yeah. Yeah. And you also told me that uh, Mrs. Thompson, um, the minister's wife, was very much interested in you children. Oh, yes. She always took care of her. We thought at one time she wanted to adopt the two youngest ones when my mother died, but uh, naturally my father wouldn't have anything to do with that. Not that we didn't like her. She was a very nice person, but uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it was just that way. She used to have, make, make sure that there was milk left at the school nursing station for the younger kids. Yeah, yeah. Because she was just a nice person. Yeah. I've heard stories about uh, some of the neighbors have said that uh, even after your mother died that your father always got all the kids all slicked up and got them to church every Sunday, uh, oh, which must have been very difficult for this, him. Uh, I don't know how he did it, except that I had my sister Jenny and my sister Helen, which were old enough to take mm -hmm. care of us. I think Jenny was about 17 when my mother died. Mm -hmm. But uh, we all went to Sunday school all along. And Mm -hmm. and stayed dressed up all day a Sunday, too. You didn't dare mm -hmm. win the living room on Sunday. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Stayed clean. Yeah. Now, Bill, tell me, your father worked two jobs. He had a job at Zinser's, and he worked as a stonecutter um, also, as well as working as, at yeah. Zinser's. Yeah, well, his trade was really stonecutting, and when he was a young man, of course, that's all he did, practically. But then when the winter months came, he had to go make a living in the winter, so he worked in the factories. I believe partially Zinzers, I, and I think it was the old National Conduit and Cable, mm -hmm. which was down on the riverfront here, yeah. which he put in some time during the winter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's talk about some of the, the stone walls that he built in Hastings. Do you recall what some of them were? Well. As you, mainly at the ones in Uniontown, of course he did all the work around 149 James Street, which was our family home. And he put the one on the corner of Rose Street and High Street, which was belonged to uh, Tom Gorman. And he, coming up the hill just a half a block, is Winstanley's, which is in the middle of High, between High and, uh, between Rose and James Street. He mm -hmm. built that one. This mm -hmm. is the original wall. Maybe it's, some of these have been rebuilt since mm -hmm. and had work mm -hmm. done on them. And also the one on Bill Borman's corner, on the corner of James and High Street. Mm -hmm. That and wasn't a very tall wall. No, one. no, they're yeah. about hip high. They, yeah. they, they weren't, okay. weren't that tall. But and then the main one, which I consider a monument to them, is the one up there, which uh, was on the Tom, I guess, I don't know whether it was Tom Gorman's property or Al Finordi's property, well, but, but it's on High and Hudson Street. Right, And right. he built that one, and that one's standing today, and that was built, I have to assume it was either 1930 or 31, because I was only 10 or 12 years old. And it stood all the these time, years. It's still there. Yeah, it's, it's a beautiful wall. Oh, yes. And, and at its height, uh, it's the, really, uh, that wall is really quite tall oh, yeah. down on the um, high, street side. Near high street, side. yes. 
How how tall do you estimate that wall is? I uh, I guess it must be about eight foot, seven or eight foot. I would guess. Don't yeah. you think so? It starts up on Hudson Street. Yeah. And it's a long wall up there. It's the long, one the long on, section on, there on Hudson Street, the one where the house faces Hudson Street. Mm -hmm. uh, that was I think that was added on after the, the one big wall. Mm -hmm. Costly. I don't. I'm not sure Pop built the whole thing, or he was working for somebody else, or not. But he did build the big one. The big one that. He uh, did build that one with him and a little little help of his sons. But we were yeah, sons. you didn't. Except my older brother was big enough. But you probably carried a few yeah, stones. Yeah, you know, mixed a little cement yeah. or something. That's, yeah. That's what. A, that's a beautiful wall. It is. It is. Yeah. It's a, and so it goes down Hudson around the corner into High and then up High Street. Well, now, as you hit High Street, see, when you go up there, you notice the whitish wall. That's the big one. Mm -hmm. and it stops at the Gormans property. And the next property was Dumbleton at the time. Well, I think this was before Dumbleton even. But he didn't build that one stretch. But yeah. the next one belonged to, I believe, Maud Finotti. Yeah, Martha who was Pages, Pages' mother. mother. Mm -hmm. And he built that. Well, I remember that very distinctly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, then up on top of the hill, he built Griesmeisters, which is up on the top of the hill on the right next to Ufa property. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he, he built a lot of wealth. He was old. He worked all the time. He was a hard-working man. And even if he... And those walls he built by himself. He built those he, walls. These walls were built after he did his regular day's work. He, mm -hmm. he, he put in a few hours here and a few hours there and daylight mm -hmm. saving time or what have you, you know. Mm -hmm. Where do you think he got the stone for, for these walls? Well, this was something that's always been a puzzle to me because I, I do remember the stone being on the ground. I never remember seeing it delivered. But we did have three quarries in Hastings at the time. We had the Nichols Quarry, which is over there in Rosedale Avenue, practically across the street from where I live now, at Nichols Drive and, and Rosedale Avenue. And there was the big quarry on the Draper Estate, which the village filled partially in as a dump. And there was also the quarry right there across the street from where the wall is built, which mm -hmm. belonged to Glaciers, I believe, yeah. and Finaudis. Yeah. But I. I so can't seem to place any stone being cut out of there at the time, but I guess it might have. Yeah. See, with uh, that was with on the corner. stone cutting, he had to cut, cut and shape every stone that went in there. It, was, it wasn't Didn't just have that, any machine. It wasn't just a matter of just picking up a stone and setting it in place. And you and watched him with a, was it a hammer and chisel? A what, regular what? hammer and chisel, point and tools. Mm -hmm. yeah. So he had to shape it as he went along, the that's size right. that that's, he wanted? That's right. He'd mm -hmm. have to put up a stone and then he'd walk around the pile and look for one that sort of fit in the next spot, mm -hmm. lay it over on its side and shape it, yeah. and put it in. And they were all put together with cement? Oh, of course, yes. Yeah, right. Yes. Yeah. There are a number of walls and hedges that are called dry walls that don't have cement, but mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. don't ever remember seeing him working on them. Mm -hmm. I know there's a bunch of them on Nichols Drive and quite a few up on the back of the Hudson Heights. That are dry walls? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bill, you said your father worked on the Zinser Estate building walls up there or, or yes, working, yes. doing some kind of stone work up yes, there. Yes, whatever, whatever came along. He was, you know, he was a pretty well-known stone cutter. Well, I... He was you think connected uh, with the students he because he worked there probably and you know, mm -hmm. we had a big family and probably yeah. they knew he needed a book, I guess. Yeah, yeah. You know. Right. And also you said he traveled sometimes to uh, get to his job. Well and the traveling was that this was all done before the thirties. The walls I've spoken about just now were all done within my recollection. And his traveling was cutting stone. Well, he was a stone cutter in New York City. He was a stone cutter in Yonkers when they put up the post office down in Larkin Plaza. He cut curb, he cut steps, he was a stone cutter. Mm -hmm. And he worked out of the Watson, Quar Watson Stone Yards, which were down on Alexander Street, right next to where the jail is now. And he worked on West Point, on the walls on West Point. And when he went worked there, he went away for the weekend. 
uh, for the week and then come home on the weekends, Saturday, Sunday, and he worked on the Rockefeller estate and he walked to that. He worked on the Rockefeller estate and he had a walk up there and back every day, which he did, and he worked on most of the walls along, not, I wouldn't say most, but, mm -hmm. but a lot of the walls between Hastings and North Tarrytown. He was part of a work crew with Yes, he worked mm -hmm. like for a contractor that yeah. would go in. Yeah. He also did a lot of work up in Hudson Heights for the Hudson P. Rose Company, which was the developer of Hudson Heights. Mm -hmm. You see some of the walls, if you ride over in the back of Mount Hope Boulevard, uh, there's quite a number of walls in there that you can see in there. Mm -hmm. but, you told me that uh, when he went to the city, he rode the streetcar. Oh, yes. Tell us about the oh, streetcar well, ride. I, I remember the trolley tracks on Farragut Avenue when they were covered over. But the trolley tracks used to come all the way over to Green Street in Uniontown. And they used to get on the trolley and ride down through the village, down Warburton Avenue and into the Bronx, maybe into Manhattan for all I know. But they used to take the trolley every morning. Mm -hmm. Where did your mother and father shop when they were in Hastings? Were there many shops that they went to in the village? Yeah. Well, when I was a little kid, uh, old Mrs. Bill Gorman had a store right on the corner of High and James Street. And was that a grocery store? Yeah, it was a little grocery store. And later on, Inkwees had a store, which is still there, mm -hmm. on the corner of Rose and High Street. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a guy by the name of Lewis had a store down on the corner of Green Street and Farragut Avenue. Now, this is what I remember when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. But they used to go in to the village sometimes, maybe once every week or so. And uh, there was a Daniel Reeves and a James Butler store in the village. A and general then, and then later on, later on they put an A and P. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. as far as clothes like socks and shirts and stuff, we used to have two uh, dry goods salesmen used to come around with their horse and wagon and mm -hmm. stop on the street and once mm -hmm. they go out and pick out a couple of socks or a couple mm -hmm. of handkerchiefs, whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, most of the shopping was done in Yonkers. Uh, you know, big shopping. You could, you could take a number, number five trolley on Nepahan Avenue mm -hmm. and go into Yonkers. Yeah. And then when I was young, the trolley car used to, they cut it out from Uniontown, I don't know when, but they did. Uh, it used to come up Main Street to about where the youth center is now. Mm -hmm. And we used to, in fact, when I was young, we used to get down the Bronx by the number five and then come back up by the number one and come up around, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, come around the back. Bill, uh, do you know how Uniontown got its name? No. No. I, I understand that somebody told me one time it was because the Union soldiers were and camped up there. Yeah, I, the this Uniontown like, play, playground there. Yeah, yeah. well, all, all of you, who knows, there was no houses there then, uh, you know, yeah. that was a long yeah. time ago. But that's the story. I don't know if it's true. Mm -hmm. I have mean, any idea if it's true. All right, you, you bought things from the uh, peddler that came around. Uh, did you do any gardening or well, raise I'm any I'm animals I'm or I'm anything? I always had a load of chickens and a lot of rabbits. And and corn and tomatoes and mm -hmm. everything. Yeah. Oh yeah. Who was the cook in your family? Oh, Jenny had your a, older sister. Was, oh yeah, the cook. she was chief cook and bottle washer. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, she was a good person. Mm -hmm. Did you ever swim in the Hudson River? Sure. Yeah. Plenty. Yeah. Fish down there too. Mm hmm. Did you fish down there too? Crab mostly. You I did crab. I didn't much fishing. I yeah. Did a lot of crab. Yeah. Well, this. We used to. Uh, swim down below the, the orphanage bridge down there, below Zinz's. I think they took that down recently. The, the orphanage bridge, you mean the school. school. Yeah, there used right. to be a beach down in mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And then we used to get down on the rocks, of course. Yeah, yeah. Is there anything else I need to ask you about your father that we didn't talk about? Mm, I don't know. I'm trying to think, because I went over a lot of stuff. Well, he certainly was a very active man. What I was wondering while you were telling me this, how did they get the stones from the quarry over to the workplace where he was working? Oh, they had to. Uh, 
must have hauled them in horse and wagon. Mm -hmm. Who had the horse and wagon? Well, old Abe Abernathy used to work for the village, and he had one of these dump wagons where the bottom of the wagon opened up. So your father would go over to the quarry, and he'd have to cut out the stone from the quarry. Well, I don't know. Maybe somebody in the quarry was working cutting stone too, knocking mm -hmm. it out, blasting mm -hmm. it out, however they did it. I don't really know. So you think the Nichols may have sold stone out of their quarry? Oh, they did, definitely. Yeah. 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 And the village from At that, that time, I think Nichols lived right down there at the corner of where Farragut Road and Farragut Parkway come yeah. from. In fact, there's a wall right there that runs down the Farragut side that Pop probably worked on. Mm -hmm. but, uh, mm -hmm. I wouldn't say for sure. Probably did. He so probably worked well. in the Nichols Quarry for yeah. that well. time, too. You know, yeah. to, Cutting he was a stone cutter. Right. <laughs> so when, whenever they needed a stone yeah, cutter. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. about what it amounted yeah. to. How old was he when he died, Bill? 87. Yeah. Well, that was he a hard... Died in, he died in uh, 1963. Well, he had a hard job, didn't he? He worked hard all his life. I noticed you didn't go into stone cutting. <laughs> <laughs> Was it too hard? You weren't interested? I don't know. I, I never had an interest in it. Yeah. I only Did any of your brothers have an interest in going no, into stone cutting? No. My brother James worked for a while in a stone yard and up and down the Bronx cutting stone with machines. But with I had machines. a brother-in-law whose family owned it owned a stone yard in, in the Bronx, my oldest brother, Tom McConnell, and they cut the stone and shipped it. So but cut by machine? Cut by machine. No hand? No, uh, BBs, 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 BBs and uh, rhinestones. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Okay, anything else um, that we ought to talk about? Uh, your father lived in the, the James Street house all his oh, life. That's right. He, never, it, he never remarried. Brought his bride there. Yeah. Raised his family there. Lived there all of his life. Right. right. Yeah. Grew vegetables and animals yeah. and yeah. Uh, yeah. no restrictions about the animals. You didn't have to be careful no, about that. Well, he always had at least two or three dogs. Uh huh. He used to go to work at night. He'd come home in the morning with three or four dogs and feed them, and they'd sleep in the backyard. and. The, Next afternoon when he'd go to work, he'd take the dogs with him. Yeah. They were working in the factory 10, 12 hours a day, then, you know, every mm -hmm. day, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was a tough life. Well, he certainly seems like a very admirable character to me, Bill. He I was a nice he, guy. Yeah. He, he, he really he, I think he's certainly a person uh, oh, yeah. he, we would all admire. Yeah, he was a nice yeah. guy. Hard-working old man. Okay. <laughs> Thank you I very much, that's about Bill. it, though. Okay, thank you.